guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to cover a glitch effect. Now there's so many ways to do a glitch effect. There's so many different looks and so many different ways it can end up. Um, for this particular one, I'm going to be trying to replicate an example found in a Photoshop video. Um, it's a pretty neat effect. It just happens to be one that I observed um, some folks had interest in. So we're going to try to see how we can do it in PaintShop Pro. So let's get to it. So to start off, I'm going to use this image I got from pexels.com. And the first thing we want to do is just apply a little bit of blur. And, and applying blur is just a part of this whole sequence that you'll see where we're trying to reduce fidelity of the image to give it that sort of like older VCR type look. Um, so a two um, seem to work out pretty well for me. It's just a little bit of blur, but not a whole lot. Um, of, making it look fuzzy. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go to image split channel split RGB and this is what's going to allow us to get those color halos that are like deviations between um, the different parts of the image. Now there's a lot of different ways that we can do the deviations. Um, the transforms we can either translate it, we can scale it, or in this case to create a similar effect in the uh, a reference video we're going to turn on the mesh warp tool. And I've changed its mesh horizontal and mesh vertical to be pretty small numbers just because uh, I'm not gonna do a lot of crazy changes. It's just gonna be minor and I don't need too many um, nodes to be able to do it. So two and three seem to work pretty well for me. Um, and really what we're gonna do is just take like two channels, I'm going to use red and blue and just apply some very small adjustments to it. So by clicking on one of these nodes and then dragging, um, we, can, we can sort of warp the image, if you will. And by holding control, what you'll notice is that as I moved this one node, this one kind of came with it proportionally. That to me just gives the, the mesh warp a little bit more of a smoother transition kind of look. So just small deviations applied on blue. We'll click the checkbox to apply that. Then we'll move to red and then maybe do kind of the opposite. We'll drag this one out and then drag this one out a little bit. And then hit apply again. And so now with the slight modifications between our red and blue and having left the green behind, what we can now do is go to image combine channel and then combine from RGB. And PSP seems to kind of know that it split them and it must look for these names. So it found our red, green, and blue. So we can hit OK. And then what we'll see is that having done that created our nice sort of color deviations based on the warping that we did. So next what we want to do is go to our original and then do copy and go to our new image and do paste as new layer. And actually, since I don't need these anymore, I'm going to close the red, green, and blue. Come back to our new image. And so we're going to do a very similar kind of thing with this raster layer, this new raster layer that we put in here. And I'm going to call this distortion. And then we're going to do the mesh warp uh, once again. And this time I'm just going to do something not too different from what I did before. Again, just very slight deviation because we don't want it to be too dramatic, but we just want it to be enough that when we create our mask, it'll show through. All right, then when we're done, hit apply. All right, so next what we want to do is we're going to be creating the mask between these two layers. And to do that, first what I want to do is create a new raster layer. Use the flood fill tool and set the value to white and fill. And then I'm gonna to go to the vector graphics rectangle tool. And with these material settings where we have no line and we have a black fill, essentially what we want to do is um, draw the black regions, which is essentially going to be the regions that are going to allow the background to show through. Now, um, in drawing these, what I would recommend is that you kind of bias your mask to be one or the other. So either have a lot of white and 
you know, a few black lines or have a lot of black and have thin white lines. However you want to do it is your choice. It's just going to decide which one has more emphasis in your picture. In my case, I'm going to have the background have more emphasis, so I'm going to draw um, a lot more black boxes. All right, so once we have our mask lines, we need to make the, the white layer fully transparent since we don't need to see the underlying image as a reference. Then we want to select the distortion layer, and then we can say, create a mask, but from image. And since image five, which is our image, already kind of has the pattern we're looking for, we can just say image five source luminance. And then if we disable visibility of the vector layer and the raster layer, now we can see the effect of our mask as applied to the distortion layer. And if we turn that off, we can see we come back to our original color split. And then now we have these deviations from our distortion layer. So then next, what we can do is just create a little bit of effects on this layer so that it kind of mutes it a little bit. First, we can do a little bit of adjustment with levels and maybe just kind of brighten the middle just so that it's sort of like muted in a way, not too much. We don't want it to stand out too much compared to the layer underneath. And then we can decrease the saturation a little bit. And, and at this stage, I'm just kind of choosing subtle effects, but you can go with whatever you want to target here. And then perhaps um, we'll duplicate this layer and then add some noise. And the reason we duplicate it is just so that we can control the strength of the effect with the opacity of the layer. So maybe just a little bit of noise kind of zoom in just so we can kind of see the effect and then decrease the opacity just so that it kind of, you know, adds just a little bit of grain, nothing too crazy. And then another thing we could do similar to their demo is we could create a new raster layer, choose the flood fill tool and pick, I don't know, some color like a blue and fill it and then change the blend layer to color legacy and then decrease the opacity. And then this, all this does is just gives it like a little bit of like a color cast, right? If you want that kind of a kind of effect. So next we're gonna deviate from our picture a little bit to create a fill, a custom fill pattern. And what we wanna do here is create some scan lines. And the way we can do that in PaintShop Pro is uh, we can create a new image and so what you'll notice is my dimensions already set here, but to create a scan line pattern, you really don't need a whole lot of data. You really just need like a single, um, you know, slit, if you will, that's going to represent the pattern that's going to repeat both horizontally and vertically. So I've set my dimensions to a one by four. And we can zoom into this super tiny image and then switch to our paintbrush. And then even with its size set very small, um, I can just choose black and paint that one pixel black. And so essentially what you're seeing is we've created a pattern where a majority of it is white and there's just a very small portion of it that's going to be black. So to make this available to PaintShop Pro as a fill pattern, what we need to do is save it, but save it in a location that you've already added to PaintShop Pro's pattern location. So in my case, I have a folder um, where I keep all of my custom PaintShop Pro assets and I have a patterns ones. So I'm just going to call this one scan lines, save it as a PNG. And you can confirm where your file locations are by going to file preferences and file locations and by clicking on patterns. Um, you can see what are all the locations where PaintShop Pro is going to look for patterns. So now that I've saved that as scan lines, I can go back to my original image. We can delete some of these extra layers that aren't needed anymore. And we can create a new raster layer. Go to the flood fill tool. And now when we go and choose a pattern, we should be able to find our scan lines pattern. And there it is. Now, 
it may look this way for you as it does for me right now where it's not very obvious that my pattern is showing up here. And that's just because of how the scale is set. If I were to drop it all the way down, then you'll be able to see, okay, there's my you know, black dot with the majority white pixels spread across in both directions. Now for the way I wanna use it in my image, the scale needs to be all the way up. So click okay, and then we'll flood fill on this new layer that we created. And then there you can see that pattern being applied. And then by changing the blend layer to multiply, now we can see it overlaid onto the image. And um, I'd like to kind of reduce its, its effect a little bit. So we're gonna bring down the opacity to some degree, just so that we're not darkening the image too much, but we're still getting that texture that it creates. So then finally, we can just apply some like whole image level um, effects. Um, one is actually, I'll use that raster layer in a second, but first what we can do is add a brightness contrast adjustment layer, and then just decrease the contrast overall. Like the whole idea is just trying to reduce the fidelity of the image. And in this case, by doing this, we're reducing the dynamic range. Then with this new raster layer that I just created, we can fill that with like a dark gray and then add noise, add more noise. Um, and just, you know, this one we can probably a little bit more liberal on. And then change its blend layer to soft light. And then again, this is one of those where you can, you know, adjust the opacity to however much level of noise you want applied to the entire image. And then just for me, just for this particular image, because I think it would add a little bit more focus back, um, I'm going to add another raster layer, use the flood fill tool, but then use one of my fill patterns that I like to use often, which is my method of doing vignetting, which is essentially just a black fading to full transparency um, in a circular pattern. So applying that, it kind of darkens the corners, and we can change that to soft light as well and then decrease its opacity just so that it's not too intense. And that's it. So once again, this is just one way of doing a glitch effect and a glitch effect more specifically based on um, another, another video tutorial approach. One big difference between the approach I took and what was shown in the Photoshop video is that um, since PaintShop Pro doesn't have smart objects, this can't really be done as a template, even though we used adjustment layers and have masks and all that um, it isn't as simple to just replace the image because uh, just even the act of splitting the rgb and recombining is a very destructive process but i hope this showed you a lot of different things fill patterns you know being able to play with rgb channels and such and that you guys come up with really cool and creative art of your own so anyway that's it for me if you have any questions or suggestions for content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of when new content is posted, feel free to subscribe. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page that's on the link shown on the TV. And I'll see you guys next time.